Our next unit of study is ancient India. India's first civilization began in the Indus River Valley. It began there because the crops could go really, grow really well in the rich soil. The Indus civilization lasted from 2600 BC to 1900 BC. Two of the largest cities in this region were the Arapa and Mashandaro. Each city had about 35,000 people. What's interesting is that these cities were very advanced. They had paved streets. They had almost like indoor plumbing, but uh, they had pipes that led from their bathroom to take the waste outside the city. And they even had um, garbage chutes that would take their trash from their house into bins in the street. Most people at the time were farmers. They grew rice, barley, wheat, peas, and cotton. There were no written records of these people at the time, so experts have had to go back to what is left of their cities to learn about them. Um, and in 1900 BC, they just began to leave their cities. No one's really sure why. Some people believe that it was lack of precipitation, so lack of rain or drought. Um, some believe it's flooding, or even some people believe that the next group of people we're going to talk about, the Aryans, attacked them. So soon after those Indus Valley people began to leave, people known as the Aryans began to settle in the Indus River Valley. Um, the Aryans were nomads from Central Asia. They were as they were not a single race or tribe. They are actually a group of people who spoke similar languages. And this language family was called the Indo-European language family. Over time, the uh, Aryans became farmers, so they stopped being nomads. And eventually, um, they began to believe that cattle was very sacred, and so they stopped eating the meat of cattle. So let's continue with the Aryans. Once the Aryans became farmers, they developed a written language called Sanskrit. They used this language to keep um, track of their sales and trade, and eventually began to use this language to write things like poetry, songs, hymns, stories, myths, that all focused on religion, on the gods, and history. These books became very sacred and um, were called the Vedas. Eventually, in the Aryan society, a caste system developed. The caste system was rules for every part of everyday life. The different castes in this Indian uh, society were grouped into four classes called the Varnas. So you see here this social hierarchy of the caste system in Indian society. Now it's very important to realize that you cannot move to a different caste. Um, you cannot marry. When we say it, it has uh, rules for every part of life, we'll talk more about that in class. But it did, it, uh, whatever caste you were in, you had very specific rules and laws that you had to follow or duties you had to follow. So looking at this, the bottom of it is the sudras. These are where most of the people in Indian population lived. They were your servants, your lower class workers. They did not have very many rights. Then you have the vyasyas. These were your farmers, your craftsmen, and your merchants. Um, in the middle you have the kshatriyas. These were the people who run the government or your warriors. And at the very top, the most powerful were your brahmin or the priests. Now, one group that is not mentioned anywhere on this caste system is so, a group called the Untouchables. This was a group that was considered too low to even be a part of the caste system, and they did the very dirty work of society, like cleaning up the trash and things like that. Um, and they also had to live apart um, from anyone else in the caste system. So, that leads us to his next point in ancient India, which is Hinduism. Hinduism is one of the oldest religions in the entire world. It was formed by the combination of the Aryan religion and of the religion of the people that lived in, or ideas of the people that lived in India at the time. Hindu believe, Hindus believe in one great spirit called the Brahman. They believe that all living things and even some gods are a part of the Brahman. Hindus believe that a person's soul will eventually join the Brahman. So before that can happen, however, they believe that a soul must live many lives. And the idea of this living many lives in different forms is called reincarnation. So Hindus believe that you can be reincarnated into other people, sometimes even animals. So according to Hinduism, if a person does their duty of their caste system, then they will um, be reborn or reincarnated into a better next life. They must follow their dharma or that personal duty or the du duties of their caste system. And if the person follows their dharma, then they would have what's called good karma. So some of you have heard karma before, but karma is the result of how a person lives. So if you have good karma and you follow your duty, then you're going to um, eventually reach Brahman. So you're going to be born again into a better caste system. You'll follow the cycle again, and eventually you'll uh, reach their great spirit called the Brahman. However, if you have bad karma and you, you could be reborn into a lower caste system and still remain in that cycle of reincarnation. So if that's a little confusing, let's look at the next diagram of that. 
So if you look at this diagram, you will see what we're talking about. So basically, you are born into a caste system. So you do your duty of a caste system, which means you follow your dharma. Which means if you're doing, following your dharma, you're doing your duty, you have and cre have created good karma. Which means you will be reborn into a better life or born into a better caste system. And eventually, this would end with you reaching that universal spirit of the Brahmin for the Hindus. Okay? There are three major Hindu gods that we will talk about in class. You have Brahma, which is the creator god. Vishnu, the preserver, Siva, the destroyer. And what it's important to realize is that all three of these gods are manifest forms or attributes and functions of that universal spirit called the Brahmin. Our next religion we'll talk about in this unit is Buddhism. Prince Siddhartha Gautama was born in 563 BC. Uh, he was very wealthy, and one day he left his palace, and he was shocked to see how many poor people there were. And so he began to ask himself, why was there so much suffering, and what was the true meaning of life? So Siddhartha traveled across India wondering this. Um, throughout his journey, he would fast, which means he would not eat, and he would also meditate upon the meaning of life and suffering. Finally, he came to the understanding of the meaning of life, which means that Siddhartha became what we call enlightened. Siddhartha spent the rest of his life teaching people about his discovery. People called him Buddha, which means enlightened one. His lessons about life and suffering created the religion of Buddhism. Buddha taught that everyone should stop wanting for fame, money, and worldly possessions or worldly things. And that if people stopped wanting for those things, then they would reach something called nirvana. Or they would reach, when you reach nirvana, that means you have a feeling of perfect peace and happiness. Uh, Buddha said that the only way to reach nirvana was to follow what was called the Eightfold Path. So the Eightfold Path were eight steps that a Buddhist must follow or rules for living. Now, the first one is know and understand the Four Noble Truths. So in blue, you can see the Four Noble Truths. The first one is suffering and unhappiness is a part of human, human life and no one can, can escape it. The second one is that suffering comes from the people's desire for pleasure and material goods. The third noble truth is that people can overcome their desire and ignorance and reach nirvana. And by reaching nirvana, you free the soul of reincarnation. And number four is people can overcome desire and ignorance by following the Eightfold Path. So you can see in purple, we'll go to the second um, uh, idea of the Eightfold Path, which is give up worldly things and do not harm others. The third is tell the truth, do not gossip, and do not speak bad of others. Fourth, do not commit evil acts. Five, do rewarding work. Six, work for good, not evil. Seven, make sure your mind keeps your senses under control. And eight, practice meditation so that you see the world in a new way. Now, Buddhism, as we continue... Uh, Buddha would, did not agree with the caste system. He taught that everyone had the capability of reaching that nirvana or that perfect peace and happiness. Therefore, Buddhism became very popular for the people of their lower castes to follow. Siddhartha, or Buddha, taught for 40 years, and when he died, his followers could not agree upon what his message really meant. Therefore, two branches of Buddhism was formed. You have Theravada Buddhism, which believed that Buddha was a good teacher, and that Buddha was not a god. But then you have Mahayana Buddhism, which believes that Buddha was a god, and that you also have this idea of Buddhistaphas, which are enlightened people who choose not to go to heaven because they want to stay on earth to help people reach nirvana. Now, it's important to remember that Buddhism, or, or today, there are very few Buddhists who actually live in India. Most of the people practicing Buddhism today live in South, Southeast Asia and East Asia.